morning, good afternoon, or good night, my fellow Sheebits. Today, I'm going to bring all of you a Boku no Hero Academia video. And I gotta say, that final scene got me so hyped. I was fangasming externally and internally after that scene with All Might. When he walked through that fucking door, and he's like... I am here. And you see that great art on his face? Episode ends. I'm like, yo, badass. Because that right there was a perfect cliffhanger. And I remember when the chapter cliffhangered like that as well in the manga. And I was like, bro, that's just so badass. Oh my god, dude. I am just so fucking hyped right now after watching that episode. It was just so fantastic. Once again, another glorious episode that really stayed true to the manga and also added so much more layers to an already good manga. Just seeing it animated was absolutely awesome. That scene, like one of my favorite scenes in this episode, was definitely the scene to when Aizawa, he's fighting and Nomu pops up smashes him on the ground and as he's sitting there on the ground and he's fighting, he's a pro hero after all, and he's on the ground, his arm is completely bent, like it is just shattered. If you looked at his arm, you'll see how broken it is. And then you will see his other arm, it gets crushed down. And I'll get into, you know, the details and stuff of Nomu in a minute. But the entire scene, the way it was executed with the music, and it, it built it up with the hopeless situation that Aizawa could not handle this by himself. And you just see, you know, Izuku, and you see Suyu, and then you see Great Boy just watching this entire event. And they're scared shitless, they're like, what the fuck? This big, strong being is just crushing Aizawa like he's nothing. And all of a sudden, you have it to where... Dr. Hands, I was about to spoil his name, Dr. Hands rushes and actually tries to attack Suyu. And we saw a demonstration of his quirk when he went after Aizawa. And it goes to show you that this dude has a lot of intelligence. He's not someone that is stupid. Because he was actually counting the intervals and seconds in between Aizawa's quirk ability when he closed his eyes or when, you know, his hair fell down. And he was figuring out how his quirk worked of how he could counteract against what he was doing. So this dude right here, this villain, the, uh, the villain with the hands, I, I want to say his name, but like I said, spoilers, it just shows you the threat of him and how intelligent he is because he actually was able to figure out how Aizawa's quirk was working. And then when he grabbed his elbow and he started disintegrating it, it was so fucking creepy. Like, it looks so much more jarring than the manga did because when you actually see the skin just peel off and then you just see the muscle underneath, I'm like, oh my god. And it, it just goes to show you how devastating that ability is from him because if he can just touch you just with his hand, he can actually disintegrate you slowly. That is... That's a very dangerous quirk, which once again goes along with what we had at where number 13 said. 13 was talking about how certain, you know, quirk users, they have quirks that are easier to kill others with. And that type of quirk, once again, goes to prove, prove that some people are born with quirks that could just kill someone, maybe even on accident. Because look, the dude has a quirk ability to where he can touch someone. And, or touch anything and it disintegrates. And we already saw an example of this a couple of episodes back when the school got attacked by the news press and all that, when they were just rushing in. We saw how the entire gate was disintegrated. Gets to show you how his ability works, how strong it is. So, yeah, if you get touched by that, you're just going to disintegrate. And you got to love the reaction of how Izuku fought very quickly because Suyu was about to have you know, her entire face disintegrated, just completely disintegrated. You have it to where he was going in, about to put his hand on her face, and before even Izuku reacted, Aizawa lifts up his head as his arms are already crushed and saves Suyu and deactivates his power. And then all of a sudden, Izuku jumps up and he tries to go after him to save her. That was such a wonderful fucking moment because it was just so much stress and tension on it. Like, the tension was insane because we know Aizawa, he couldn't do much. He did everything he could. His arms are shattered. He cannot move. His eyes are bloodshot. He's been using his quirk over and over. And when you see this unstoppable creature Nomu on top of him and it crushes his head into the ground where he can't use his quirk ability to save Su you, Izuku, and Great Boy once again, uh, it seemed like all hope was lost because Izuku actually, he was going in to punch, punch him, the man with the hands, and all of a sudden the creature Nomu popped up and tanked the hit 
from Izuku, which that is the main topic of discussion I need to discuss. So, I think it's very obvious that that is very dangerous because regardless of how Izuku is like a glass cannon, how he cannot use All Might's power, he's still incredibly strong if he punches. We saw what he did to that robot at the beginning of the series. He destroyed that robot, that big giant ass robot like it was nothing. We saw what he did to the building too when he hit the building and with the air pressure what it did to all the floors. We know how strong his punch is. It's incredibly powerful and that's not even the full force of it. Now when you think about it like that, Izuku went all in. You know he didn't really hold anything back or try to hold anything back. Maybe he unconsciously held it back which is why the reason he didn't hurt his arm. But, when he went at it and was trying to save Suyu, when he punched, the dude tanked his entire attack and felt nothing. It looked like nothing really affected him at all. And that is the dangerous part, because remember what was said in this episode earlier on, and what the entire goal of this operation that the villains are doing. They're trying to kill the symbol of peace, kill All Might. And so, they wouldn't just bring a bunch of thugs and think they could kill All Might, because it would have been done before. All Might would have already have went down. So, obviously, the entire tactics of bringing all these thugs and different, you know, villains to, you know, attack the children, that's not really going to work out, because all of our characters are being able to make quick work of them like they're nothing. They're more of just a fodder. They're, they're fodder. They're just holding back some people for All Might to come in and then, call, and then you know, kill All Might. That's kind of what they're doing. And so they have a couple of members that seem to be a serious threat, and it seems like they might have a character or a person in their squad that can actually maybe fight All Might. Because when you see Izuku punch him, once again, more emphasis on that, it looks like the dude didn't even feel it whatsoever. And that is the scary part about this. When Izuku's attack doesn't even phase someone, and we know Izuku's like, you know, earlier, like, strength, like, I guess a weaker version of All Might, but still, when he punches Nomu, and he doesn't even feel effect, and we saw the devastation, we saw the wind pressure and all that in the entire stadium, so it wasn't a weak punch. We saw emphasis on how powerful it was before we noticed it was blocked, then you know that All Might's probably in trouble. Because we know he has a timer on his, you know, his quirk right now. Uh, you know, one for all, he only has a certain amount of time to use it or it can be very devastating to his health. And with this creature being able to tank Izuku, that raises the question how strong this guy is going to be against All Might when he starts fighting him. So, that is what I wanted to bring up. Now, the next thing to talk about is definitely, once again, the inner conversations going on inside of Izuku. I really am a big fan of that. I love that in anime and manga, and I love it when animators and the production team and all that love adding those type of scenes. Because, see... That's the type of stuff that gets skipped all the time in anime. It does. I've seen so many anime skip inner monologues because they just want to get to the action. They just want to get to that fucking fighting, that fucking fighting, and then make everything just kind of bland and like bleh. And that, that's about it. I'm so glad Studio Bones is putting in the inner monologues of the characters, especially Izuku as he's thinking about the situation and breaking it down. I love how they're adding his personality in. And the voice actor is doing such a good job with it as well compliments to the voice actors in this episode they're doing a damn good job with this series okay next thing to get into is definitely how all might was called in we know all might had to be called in because of what Ida did he managed to escape and make it out and you gotta love the effort of all of our characters to save you know Ida for he could actually escape get out and call for more help which led to all might coming in at the end of this episode so it was a very good job on their part and it goes to demonstrate their skills of how they can deal with situations like this and it seems like all the other heroes the entire cast like Tokoyami you know the guy that looks like a bird it has like the shadow thing coming out I'm not gonna spoil anything very Badass. I love seeing him animated. Personally, one of my favorite characters, and I'm glad to see him animated. I love his voice actor, and seeing what he did in this episode, I was having a little bit of a mini fangasm, because, like I said, he's one of my personal favorite characters. Now, also, we get to see Todoroki in this episode of how he's fighting and showing some of a darker side to himself. That's the Ice Boy, by the way, the person using the ice. Todoroki showing, like, a darkish type side. He didn't want to hurt the villains to kill their cells because he wants to be a hero, but it shows you how his ability could be very dangerous but also he has this cold demeanor about him and then we also see some form of you know bromance forming between Bakugo and also one of our other characters and I love that too I love that scene a very good scene 
So yeah, a lot of good setup here and there throughout the entire episode, and I gotta say right now, this episode was on point and excellent. It looks like next week is probably going to be an all-out battle-orientated episode, and I'm excited for that. I think next week is the final episode as well for Boku no Hero Academia. Makes me sad, but I mean, all good things must come to an end, and I mean, look... One Punch Man's final episode was badass. I think we all remember how badass that final episode of One Punch Man. Now, obviously, that's a different studio. That's from Studio Madhouse. This is Studio Bones. But I I'm willing to bet because of the content I know is going to be coming up with next week's episode, it's going to be fucking fantastic. I can't wait to see it animated. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please be safe. Chibi out.